Hello everyone and welcome to another video. As you can see, today we are starting from scratch and we are focusing on relations and rollups. So this is a beginner, um, let's call it tutorial, because I'm just going to explain you how to just do a basic relation and how to get rollups, what this can bring to your space and how to make it work for you. So, um, I think the easiest way to do this is using the para system. Um, so I'm sure you have heard of it. Um, let's just call this page para system. We are going to create a gallery in line. And let's just call it para, right? Um, let's just make this full width. Um, we are going to up. Oh, Okay, I'm going to move myself. Uh, we are going to, for now, not have um, a card preview. Just make it cards like this. And let's have, so para stands for projects. Let's delete this. Projects, areas. resources and archive so we can have this per system involves three databases so one for projects one for areas and one for resources um, if we go inside each one we can delete this created well you can keep it if you'd like and the tags um, I'm just going to delete it. I'm just going to do it like if this was my workspace, but obviously you can choose to keep those properties. And I'm just going to say that the page comments are off, so you don't have that um, add a comment there. Uh, we're going to go here and start our projects database. So for our projects, let's do another gallery in line. Right. Let's call this projects database. Okay. And once again, you can keep these or let's just delete the created, but the tags can stay. And now we have to leave this here, but we're going to connect the projects to an area and to resources. But for now, we're going to leave it like this. Now we're going to go to areas and do the same thing. Gallery in line. I'm going to delete these areas database. Um, delete this. Okay, now we already have a database for projects. So let's call this property projects. So we are in an area and we're going to connect this area to specific projects. To do that, we go to property type and we choose relation. And in relation, we're going to choose projects database. Create relation. And the re relation is created. Let's call this uh, example of area. If we now go back to our first database, which is projects, you will see that if we go to our projects example, Project example, or let's go like that one, example of project. You now have a new um, property that was added automatically. So actually, I created this, but we don't need that. So it says related to areas database, and then it says projects. So it is a project that is related to the areas database. What happens is, I I think this is quite confusing. There's all these words, so I like to rename it. So we know that this is the area of this project. So we're just going to type in area. And now we can actually select and say that the area for this project is this one we created. Right? I'm actually going to delete this as well. If we go now to our areas in our example of area, you, we will see that under projects, our example of project is now there. So we're going to repeat the same thing for resources. 
we're going to click um, instead of a gallery for resources I'm going to go with a list inline let's call it resources database and example of a resource once again I'm just going to do that now we're going to add another relation and now for the resource we're going to connect this resource to an area or a project but we don't have to create both because there's already a relationship between projects and areas so there's already this link and if we create a link to one of those two we can actually find that relationship automatically so I'm going to explain we're going to create a relation to a project so projects database create relation so let's call this property project so we can actually come here and choose our example of project then we're going to add another property and now instead of relation we're going to click roll up when you click roll up we're going to name this area because this will be our area if we click here it will ask us which relationship relation are you looking for and there's only one which is our project relation and in the project database it finds the properties there so the properties in the projects database are these ones and you can choose to find the area so that's exactly what we want we click in area and as you can see automatically it shows you the area of that project now this we're going to do another example let's go to the resources again and let's type in resource 2 um, just to uh, show you how it works let's just add a project 2 and let's say it's the same it's in the same area so we go to resource 2 and we say that the project is project 2 um, and actually we didn't say which area project 2 is in I thought we did didn't we? anyways apparently we didn't uh, so when we go now to the resources in resource 2 the area is automatically there so you don't have to choose which area it is because you've already connected that project to an area before so that is the main thing about relations and rollups. Relations is something you have to create and then rollups will, if you connect it to one of those things that are related within themselves, then you can actually extract those relations um, to another property without having to manually connect it. I hope that made sense. Um, so I think that's the main thing about uh, projects and rollups. Just to finish up this pair system, for the archive, if you wanted to make an archive, my suggestion is um, we're going to projects, let's go into our project, we're going to add a property called archive and let's make it a checkbox. Okay, so let's say, um, actually, I forgot one thing. As you can see, this doesn't look very nice once again. So what I would do is say that this is the resource. As you can see, it says related to resources. So I'll just type resources. And there you have it. So it, it looks neater that way because the automatic um, name that Notion gives it is a little confusing and um, not very straightforward and you can't read the whole name. So as you can see, that resource, we, we, we related it to the project and it automatically came up in the project as a resource. So that's how relations, relations work. So looking at the archive again, if we click um, archive this project, nothing will happen because we haven't done anything in terms of filters. So the project is here, nothing has happened. So if we go to these dots and then filter and then say that archive is not ticked off because we don't want the, the archive things in here. And as you can see, it has disappeared. Now, let's do the same thing for our areas, just in case you would like to archive um, an area. 
and let's do the same thing for the resources. I wouldn't think you would want to archive these things, but just to complete the system. Okay, so let's actually archive this one and archive area two. Let's archive that one. Let's connect it to a new project. This is another thing you can do. You can create a new project from the area just by typing projects. Obviously it doesn't exist, so you just create a new one. And if we go to projects, the new project is there. So that's a very quick way to add. Uh, when you're in one uh, database, to add data to another database is to create a relation. So you can do this very, very easily. So let's, uh, I don't remember if I archived it. Yes, I did. And our resources, let's go resource two. And let's archive that one. Uh, okay, we go to the archive. And now we're going to just um, create a header and say archive projects. Let's make this gray. Let's go, let's do archive areas. And once again, you can just choose gray like this and gray background and archive resources. And once again, gray. Right. Now we want to create views of the other databases, but this time we're not filtering the, the entries that are not archived. We're going to choose the ones that are archived. So we're going to slash link database. And this is projects. So we're going to do projects database. Here it is. Uh, you can choose the different views. I, I think a list is the easiest one to view your archive. Uh, and then we're going to filter and we're going to filter everything that's it, that the archive is ticked. So the, as you can see, this is the project that we have previously archived. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing for areas. So areas database. Let's do a list. Delete the table view. You obviously can choose whatever views you prefer. Filter. And then archive is ticked. And once again, the same thing for the resources. Resources database. I'm going to make it a list. Delete the table view. And filter for archive. So there we go. Oh, we have actually archive too. There we go. Now we have our archive um, with all the, the projects, areas, and resources that have been archived. We've got our resources in the list form. We've got our areas and we've got our projects. Um, now, you don't need to create this gallery view to show projects, areas, resources, and archive. Um, you, you could just do a header and say projects and put your database in here and have it everything in the same page. That's totally fine. So this doesn't have to be a database. I quite like this as a database because you can add cover pages. For example, let's just let, let, let Notion, Notion choose for us um, so I can show you how this can look. So we're going to go here, properties, and then card preview, let's put page cover. Um, so these are the covers that Notion is chosen for us. Maybe this is not what we're looking for, but uh, uh, this just to show you that it is a good way to just have a gallery view of um, the system, to have the system in a, in a database. Obviously you wouldn't want it to look like this. But I've actually created a free template with the pair system and I use this um, this view I will show you just now. Um, so this is the temp free template that I've created. I'll leave the link in the description. You can get it for free. Uh, and this is exactly what I did. 
uh, what I did with you, I just recreated it here, but this time in the cover I put my own images, so I've made these images with the PARA, um, and then just inserted that, uh, and then as you can see there's no name below it, and the way you do that is just by going to the three dots again, properties, and choose not to show the name in this cover here, as you can see here it shows, and here it doesn't show. And I didn't actually put this cover as a cover image, I created a property. So uh, there's two properties hidden here, and one of them is the cover. And then if you want to um, use that, you just go here and you choose the card preview as the cover. Just so it's neater, because I don't really like having cover pages inside um, each page. So you can do it that way. Uh, and then it's basically the same. So you've got your projects, you've got your areas, and the resources in the archive. Um, yeah, uh, and if you want to look at the relations and rollups in here, you've got area, resources, and then you've got projects and resources, and uh, project and area, this is where the rollup is included. Uh, and that's basically everything. And in the template, I just included the place for quick notes and um, to do's. So I will leave this template in the description below if you want to have a look. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found it helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to message me on Twitter. My Twitter is PhD Notion, and I'll be happy to um, answer any questions that you might have. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.